not possible. So that's why this talk is more of a combination of Python and stuff. And I, I think we will to make my point clear uh, towards the end of talk. Uh, so this is it for you, uh, those who have a uh, uh, lot of people think that Python is very quick and still so much production ready that you can just get your idea and have, have something working and you can still uh, deliver to uh, have some, some value. So uh, this is a mix of uh, DevOps plus Python stuff. And uh, just to give a highlight, uh, what we are, I'm going to talk about here, it's a big list of things. Uh, I think a lot of people would be attracted to uh, Django and related stuff. So uh, basically what I wanted to highlight is uh, Python is is really a good choice if you are building stuff very quickly and it, it integrates to everything else very, very, very easily. Okay, so uh, that's what I'm trying to help you out here and it will have some non-technical stuff also which is the phase one uh, which we are going to talk about is basically uh, this is the, uh, actually this is my intro. We can skip to it uh, uh, if we get some time. Uh, basically, you can tweet me at your friend room if you wanted to have some uh, discussion around or if we are running out of QA. Uh, so we 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 are going into three phases. First is uh, when you have an idea, how would you formulate it to to have a product? Uh, and then phase two will include Python related stuff and what you can do with with Python, basically Django, and how to integrate it with the stuff which which works very easy. Uh, phase three is definitely how to make it into production and how why we why Django is one of the first choice when you are going for a rapid development, production, uh, and continuous improvement. So let's have the phase one. Uh, okay, so you have an idea, and now you have it's a it's abstract thing. How do you make it concrete? So that's uh, uh, okay. So uh, all of this, what we are, I'm going to talk about is is of a real product that we tried out, and it's into production right now, and we did it into few weeks. So uh, how we started off is something called very simple thing, business model hypothesis. So you have to have your ideas written down in this format: what, who, and how. So uh, I'll be sharing links, and this this presentation is already live on Google uh, Google presentation. So you can actually click on the links and get a lot of details out of it. So basically what we are uh, uh, focusing here is how would you come up with your ideas and how would you make it uh, more actionable. So this is how you should document our idea. Uh, I think you can read through it. So basically uh, once you have this uh, business model hypothesis, you will exactly know okay what you have to build. Okay. And uh, then uh, we kind of try to use the stuff which actually gave us the action, action items, the actual business objective that we have to uh, that we have to build. So there's, there, there is something on business model canvas. Uh, how many of you have heard of business model canvas? Okay. Okay. So uh, this is a, a simpler version of a business model canvas, lean business model, uh, lean stack from lean stack and. Uh, this is how you actually uh, start writing your problems and then you'll reach to a solution and which has some revenue streams also. So uh, I, I highly, highly recommend this before uh, writing a single line of code if you are if you are into serious development, if you wanted to earn something, uh, this is this is the way to go. Uh, again, this is not a single stuff. You won't make this once. You will make this for all of your ideas, uh, all of your problems and uh, one of the good thing about this is you constrain yourself to top three problem and top three solutions. So you actually you, you try to visualize your product as uh, as lean as possible and that's the only way you could deliver some value within very short time. So I think this is this is a very top level thing that we I, I would recommend uh, if you are so how many of you here are from a product background like you know they are building into products uh, kind of yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, I think <coughs> they will be <coughs> really familiar with this. So do's and don'ts are this: uh, you have to iterate multiple times. You have to iterate in parallel. So like if you have two maps, two or three, uh, you know you should do it in parallel and then come up with something which uh, the whole team agrees upon. And uh, again, uh, uh, you don't need to use any commercial tool or don't need to use any high-five stuff to uh, have this thing 
okay, you just have a what docs or, or just PPTs going around here and there, and then you come up with some strong idea. So <coughs> that's it. So uh, we, we have it now, then what to do, how to execute it. So basically, uh, we want the actions which, which, which can be measurable, because until uh, if, you, if you do something and it's not measurable, you won't be able to improve on it. So next step is, uh, we use Trello. Uh, this is the real uh, board that we use. Uh, uh, Trello, I think how many of how many of you are a fan of Trello Trello boards? Okay, cool. So I think no introduction to Trello required. Basically, uh, uh, I just wanted to highlight you how we use two boards uh, and to manage stuff. And I think it's from user voice guys, and we kind of improved upon it or maybe modified it. So uh, you need a, uh, you need a planning board and where you put down your ideas and features at very top level. Then you have. Uh, things which are going on right now. So you know the the current team you are, you wanted to work upon. So brainstorming, and then uh, we obviously had this is this not in the original user voice board, but uh, we had infrastructure recommend which were continuously going on because we were in a uh, uh, always to production mode. So okay, uh, one two days we have something we'll deliver to till the Amazon and the HR production side. So uh, we try to do this. Uh, so we we already we have a infrastructure recommend going on. Uh, there are bugs, so any any buddy or any even customer reports something, we put it down here first, and then we prioritize. So that's it, and uh, everything, all of this one, two, three, four, must be moved to uh, ready for execution before going into next board. Uh, there is the last thing. This uh, board, it's a, it's a kind of archive stuff, but uh, we call it post evaluation. So we put down ideas there, which uh, we we are not going to do right now. That kind of stuff. So, but but we put it there for reference. So you know, uh, the guys could actually you know pick it up and if if they call, we can bring it back. So <clears throat> this is a simple stuff uh, we write out. That's is uh, really helpful to prioritize what you are planning. Okay. So uh, this is it, and uh, then we use uh, the another Trello board. So from that uh, up next, we'll actually come here. Uh, sorry, uh, from last uh, yeah, ready for execution thing will come here. Up next, and here the uh, devs and uh, no, the, uh, the other team members will pick their stars. And uh, it's like a simple uh, to do, doing, and done thing. But uh, what we did out, uh, out of this is uh, next step doing and something called launchpad. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss more about this why we are not having a done thing, why it's called not launchpad because we are following something called master based development. And so uh, launchpad seems empty right now because. We did a release, so uh, if, uh, the, all of this individual things are released. Okay, so uh, each uh, each product iteration, what we did is this. So all of this stuff, what we are in planning, and then come here, and finally we have a release. So this is actually your release now. So this is what we sent out to customers or or other or, or base. So that's 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 about the execution, and that's it. Uh, this is a whole code flow, only two board. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. So. Uh, 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 this this concludes the uh, planning execution and all that part and so I am going to talk about a lot of uh, small small stuff that you already love about and how we use it so Git uh, I, everybody or oh, everybody also Git right so no explanation about Git uh, so Git and Git branches everybody are aware about branches and all that stuff so uh, we just try to simplify stuff as uh, we use master based Git development that means. Master is exactly always ready for production. So nothing goes into master. Uh, it's exactly it was what the normal Git flow is, where master is unstable or develop branch. But uh, we generally had only two branches, mainly for develop for actually working branch and master. And uh, so what we had a very simple rule is uh, each branch must represent fully working release. So else don't branch. Okay. So uh, if if you are going to deliver it, then only do it. That's the you know the, the other way to look at it is that don't write or don't do anything which is not going to go into production because this is what we are talking about daily you know twice a day release and that's into to production so uh, that's it so uh, you know yeah sometimes you uh, there are a lot of questions about okay if you are working on something big and how how would you come at it how would you actually do it without uh, affecting other things so that's a feature flag feature flag are like normal if condition okay if there is a setting x equal to years enable feature one years then you have some code else not it's a very simple stuff very simple idea very powerful idea uh, so uh, that that's it uh, so this is how we we, we try to use git 
uh, and it's definitely a real mid Django. So uh, uh, I, I have uh, like we and uh, I have around eight years of experience with Java enterprise technologies, and uh, we had to we had to do this project due to NLP requirement. I, I think the guy uh, just discussed those sentiment analysis, and there were some few NLP features we had to use and. That's why our product was actually based on Django, based off of Django. And uh, so we, we found it very, very effective in coming from the background of uh, Java Enterprise application that this is one of the best framework which provide out of proper, out of box production readiness. So uh, Django people understand that okay, yes, this is not a toy, okay? This is not something that you, you use it for throwaway projects. This is serious stuff. So uh, I, I'll just highlight few of the few of those things which is, so Django is definitely awesome, So but I am just going to highlight very, really, very really minor things, few of the things which, which, uh, which help us to do a uh, very quick integration with this, with the, with the things. So, uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to Django a lot of features. Uh, uh, one of the very important part we, we found out about Django is uh, it has a lot, a lot of extension point at, at each and every stop. So, first point was, and whenever we have a feature, which is we that's us simple mode to make it work first and then make it correct. Okay, so and Django allows you to do this. If you were into some other framework, you might have to rewrite a lot of stuff. Okay, so uh, that's, that's what uh, that's what we are, uh, uh, that's what we like about Django at very high level. Okay, so uh, 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 as I uh, told you, I'm only going to highlight very few uh, items uh, which I directed us. It's one of the best thing is uh, data migration, and uh, Django is seriously serious about data migration, and uh, which obviously have that whole uh, previously known as Django South, uh, and now it's part, kind of a part of the code from Django 1.7 is the uh, Django migrations, and where uh, uh, where where we can actually go to full manual mode. So I'll, I'll highlight this. I think uh, it's not clearly readable, but. Uh, uh, it's a simple migration method. Those who are not aware with uh, Django migration, <coughs> uh, it, it is a simple class with two methods, forward migration and backward migration. And you can actually write literal S SQL DDLs. It, it's that simple if you want to. That, that's the point I wanted to highlight. It's, it has a full auto mode. You never have to write any SQL statement ever for migration. Yes, but when you when you wanted to make it correct, when you have, when you want to have the power, uh, that flexibility it still allows. It's, it's that simple. Okay. Uh, 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 any anybody wants to go into uh, Django migrations? Okay. No. Okay. So we can take it up later. So uh, that that that's one thing we wanted to highlight. Uh, uh, okay. And so uh, uh, I'm talking about now going to talk about a lot of things which integrate very easily with Python or, uh, and specifically Django. So PostgreSQL. Uh, 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 we are from Java Big Data background. Hadoop. I was part of uh, Apache contributors team for uh, HPs uh, at Hawaii. And uh, uh, when when we came to this land, uh, uh, you know, from last two years, I'm throwing this out uh, as a word that uh, use blue elephant before trying out yellow elephant. Anybody knows yellow elephant? I do. And blue elephant. So. Yeah, I think uh, a yellow elephant is a, a mascot of uh, Hadoop, and uh, blue elephant is is uh, a PostgreSQL. That's the icon. Okay, if you see, so uh, it's a simple thing that a uh, lot of time you actually don't need to scale that much. Okay, you uh, you you think that okay you need that much big thing, but you don't. Okay, uh, that's a saying that you hit a business uh, scalability first before you hit a technical scalability. So uh, that, that's how you start with. So start with Blue Elephant. Start with Postgres. Uh, again, Postgres is a very, very, very giant stuff. And uh, although it's a very easy to integrate, integrate with uh, Python uh, and Django, uh, we I just wanted to highlight one feature. Which, uh, it's a full text search. You can see that the, this is a, one of the powerful stuff which you can do with just few clicks, uh, few uh, few command line instructions, and you have your whole uh, current Django. Uh, sorry, Postgres server serving you the full text search engine. Okay, and you don't need Solar or any any complex stuff service running. You don't need to learn APIs. You don't need to build index. You don't need to maintain index. Everything has been taken care. So that's what I wanted to highlight that uh, full text search. Uh, there's a small uh, 200 line of code which is which gives you 
that's, that's, this is uh, Django ORM is so powerful and so extensible that you, it does 200 line of code actually allows you to integrate full text searching and indexing with your normal RDBMS table. So if you have a table, let's say, yeah, we have a table and uh, there's a text field, a uh, pass with the text. And so you uh, just few configuration option and you, you have a, you have a full text search going on onto all of this. Automatically, you don't have to do any line of code to even while injection or, or things. Uh, on top of it, uh, when you wanted to search, uh, how many of you work with Lucene or something for full text search? Full text search, any, anybody? Okay, so uh, that, that's a, a lot of, you need to learn API, you know, you know that's a REST API call you have to make. And here you will li write normal like uh, SQL query likes and that, that, is, that actually does the full text search. So uh, uh, if you wanted to go into detail when to use it, uh, there is a full detailed discussion at uh, Icon News. Uh, you can go and read when to use, when not to use. So. This is again a uh, post case, big stuff, but uh, this is a very quick integration. You can use right away in your app. Just, just, just ten line of configuration and and one line of uh, two, three line of configuration for models. That's it. Uh, 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 one of the cool stuff which uh, we are. Uh, this is one of the thing which picked up in our organization very, very quickly is uh, Ansible. Okay, how many of you work with uh, uh, configuration management, deployment automation? Puppet. Okay, so uh, I think uh, this is uh, uh, this is the kind of simplified answer to most of the questions which Puppet tries to answer. Uh, again, it's as cool as Git. Uh, technically, it uses Git inside Python inside. It's based on Python, uh, but yeah, you don't need to look into the box. It's so simple that it's simple as such. Okay, uh, uh, we had to provision a lot of services around a lot of uh, machines. So if you say, okay, Django server is here, your database server is there, uh, you have uh, Nginx running somewhere and all that stuff. So at least you have, if you go to production, you will at least have more than one machine, at least one more than one machine. So how would you, how do you make sure that you know, when you when you deploy something or you want to do rapid development, right, rapid deployment, so how would it help? So that's, uh, uh, it's, it's so easy to integrate with uh, uh, your normal Django application. Uh, how, why I wanted to highlight uh, the folder sector is, uh, uh, okay, how many uh, Django guys here? Django? Okay, cool. So, uh, uh, if, if, you, if you are aware, like in Django, if you have to build modules, uh, it's a folder structure, okay, you have to follow some patterns, and if you, uh, the, like views.py and models.py, uh, there are file names and folder structure. If you learn once, it's very easy to make modules. Exactly the same stuff, uh, if you look here, uh, uh, this, uh, the roads is actually modules. Of, of how would you want to set up your services. So if you see very top there, I have DB, web kind of uh, modules and there are tasks which, which has to be done. So uh, this whole, whole structure is, if, if you just uh, spend like 20 minutes, uh, if you're a Django guy, Ansible folder structure is, is, is exactly kind of very similar. Okay, so how, how uh, what would you do is, uh, one thing about uh, this is, it, it, it's agentless, you don't need to set, it, set up anything. Uh, on your machines, you have 50 production machine or two production machine. There is zero installation required on actual machine. You start with a blank machine, blank AWS machine, and you point out Ansible from your laptop to to uh, make it fully deploy all of your application with database, with migration, with web server, everything done just via via one SSH connection. Done. Okay, so. Uh, that's it, one of the powerful things where what we require, like say, you know, uh, we have Django has a setting.xml file and you need to customize for environment and all that stuff, right? So uh, how do you do it? So uh, they have a simple markdown uh, template, which is a JNinja2 some template, but it's as it is markdown, uh, you know, just like you're editing Git pages, it's very simple. And uh, yeah, I already highlighted it's a uh, modularized, it's the same, same as modularized Django. Okay, so okay, and uh, so uh, this is just a uh, showcase how easy it is to uh, let's say install and configure a uh, 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 database uh, web server to allow database connections. So uh, you have host file, you have variable file, and uh, HP. This is the Postgres configuration file. If you see, I have uh, you can write down a very simple for loop to to. Uh, 
customize your configuration file. It automatically does all this variable replacement and all that stuff. So uh, uh, you can uh, you can come down to me later on also if you want more detail on this. But it's just a showcase how easy it even to do complex configuration like this. Uh, 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 next thing what we use uh, very very frequently with Django is uh, Django is uh, sometimes you need to run some external services. So it's a uh, 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 hope uh, most of you guys know Django CLI commands. It's a uh, you know uh, Django supports a CLI and you can run your custom <coughs> logic and so you will say Django manage.py and your command and uh, your custom code will run. So uh, uh, you can. Uh, basically integrate all those CLI commands or uh, your application uh, let's say uh, we had a use case there we have to run a Java service and Django app has to interact with that service that's fine it's you can you can make it very easily but uh, how would you ensure that the Java service is running properly and uh, it's it uh, how would you make sure that uh, when you deploy the things are latest into the Java service also so that's that's a simple thing it's a simple supervisory configuration one configuration file and a uh, few lines of uh, Ansible code and uh, you are done with that. So this is the Django integration with non-Python stuff. Uh, how do you do it? Okay, and then we have phase three. Uh, so this is where we are integrating. Uh, we are targeting that. Okay, we 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 try to do a lot of stuff repeatedly daily, and we we still have a running system with the new features. So. Technically speaking, there is no phase three. Uh, you have to have same execution tool and design must support continuous integration, just like Django, right? Uh, if you don't have a proper migration module, database migration, you have to do a lot of stuff manually. So you pick up a tool which actually does allows you to do continuous improvement. So most of the tools what we discussed already provides that. So uh, the learning is there is no separate phase three. Uh, when you are doing phase two execution, you have to make sure that you use right tools which allows you to do rapid things which allows you to do uh, repetitive things, repetitive deployments, continuous in integration, continuous deployment. And so, but still, uh, I'll just give you two uh, things uh, which we, uh, which mostly uh, uh, falls into monitoring part, uh, not technically measurement, but uh, uh, you can uh, use a very simple Google UA Python tracker. So uh, we, we, we wanted to have all of the Django application internal API performance uh, metrics collected. So don't need to write a lot of stuff there. Uh, there is a hundred line of uh, Python UA tracker code uh, which you can which you can pick up, and uh, by that you can actually measure each of your Python uh, method uh, performance with some metadata. You can actually log some metadata also, and you can just create a fancy report in Google Analytics or some other uh, reporting service. It's it's that easy. So. Uh, that is one thing we use heavily to measure the API performance in Python. And uh, uh, one of the last tool is uh, uh, this is for uh, monitoring your live services, load average, open file network set, disk space, and uh, our favorite stuff is uh, tailing and searching logs. So you have a production machine, you got some issue, or services are slow. How would you find out that you know what's the state in the that machine? You can just point to that machine. I have the PS test install. PS test is a simple Python. Uh, tool uh, which runs in the background, we configure it with Supervisor D, so it always runs. And you know, whenever you have issue, you can go to Python process Django. You can go to UWS process. You see the open file, network state, everything, and some exception into log file, everything from your browser. So, cool, cool one. Cool one. Uh, and finally, uh, covering some quality analysis and testing part. So basically, uh, definitely you have to focus on things uh, when you when you deliver something uh, you have to te you have to test and um, make sure that things are working fine across releases you, you if you want to do multi day release, uh, you need this so basically uh, what we did is we created a simple uh, this is a single page uh, angular js app uh, angular js there is anybody uh, any, anybody have tried out angular js yeah cool so uh, this is a simple html page with some angular js uh, uh, goodies uh, which creates a fancy chart and reporting so basically uh, it is whole open so you can pick it up right now and the good thing what we wanted to have is uh, you, you you need a simple shell or python existing test case or existing some message file which you, and it should produce a json test 
output. That's it. That's it. Has to one pass. Has to fill some description. That thing. So it's a very very simple JSON there. And if you do this, you will have this fancy report. So uh, we we do this on a, uh, release basis, and we just keep it there. So just to make sure that okay things are not breaking and that kind of stuff. So I think uh, that's it. That's it for me. One or two quick questions? Yes. Yeah, I think we have two, three minutes. Any questions? So it seems so easy, but it's actually dangerous to put people who don't know this at mean behind us, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, thanks a lot.